All right, YouTube is, uh, looks like it's now live. All right, for those of you in, you can, uh, I can see uh, 14, or it looks like we got about 13 people. I think more will come in through uh, uh, through YouTube in the in the next few minutes. So um, while we're getting started, Alexi is gonna be here in, in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to, here, let me, just look down the list. Uh, if uh, for folks that are joining us, hey Dan, uh, hey Lorenzo, uh, feel free and uh, jump in and introduce yourself. If you'd like to, you don't have to. It's not a requirement. We're this is uh, you know you can talk or not. So anybody who'd like to jump in and just say hi, I will start. My name is Robert Hodges. I work for Altenity. And I've run this meetup for the last uh, two or three years. So, uh, so welcome everybody. Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me well or not. My <laughs> my main machine exploded. And I'm on my old laptop, but I'm Dan, uh, big ClickHouse fan. Been using it in a lot of ways, exploring data sets of various sizes, and really interested in a lot of the discussion topics for today's meetup. Cool. Welcome, Dan. You and I have uh, chatted many times, so it's great. It's great to yes. hear you in person. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to jump in and do an intro? Uh, talk about okay. what you're doing. My name is Alexander Dubikov. I'm also a ClickHouse yeah. enthusiast, open source uh, fan. Um, yeah, I'm very glad to participate with meetups, uh, and I have some interesting topic what we will, together with Robert show you guys. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Uh, yeah, uh, hi, uh, hi everybody. Go no, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I'll go next. Uh, no, go ahead, please. Yeah, all right, go ahead. okay. Uh, that's why we why you need like clocking, right? Uh, so, my name is Igor, uh, I'm from London. So, I used uh, ClickHouse, my previous company, and currently we're also looking at potentially using it again in a new company. So, excited about uh, like the I guess the passion behind the project to kind of build from ground up, you know, and build on solid, uh, solid um, principles from the beginning. Um, yeah, uh, and first time on this meetup, so looking forward to to hear all the talks. Great, welcome. Hey, this is Jay. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Jay, and I'm working for Palo Alto Networks, and we are evaluating a quick house, and then so far, I believe. Uh, uh, see a good thing about uh, ClickHouse, especially performance. And uh, I really like this uh, kind of meetup. And so thank you, Robots and then and, and Alternity. We're looking forward to more, getting more information. Thank you. Great. And thanks to you. Thanks to everybody attending. Thanks to Alexander and thanks to Alexi. This is uh, this is like a nerd, uh, nerd heaven here, as I think you'll see in a few minutes. Uh, go ahead. Hey, anybody else who'd like to jump in? Hi guys, well, my name is Diego and I'm support engineer here at Altinity and I do a lot of open source and databases. And eager to learn and to hear uh, both Alexander's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diego. <laughs> cool, any other interests? Okay, I'm just typing a uh, a message out to our friends on uh, YouTube. Okay, so we've got, uh, looks like we've got about six people in. I think this will pick up as more people uh, uh, see it. All right, great, let's, uh, let's dive in. So everybody can see my screen, I hope. Uh, so this is the December 2022 uh, meetup. Let me actually just uh, uh, crank up the, uh, recording one second here. Okay, so this is being Zoom recorded. It's also being uh, uh, sent to YouTube. We have two recordings to choose from. We'll post uh, this uh, links to this afterwards. You can the, the the YouTube recording in general is the easiest one to use. The link is is already posted in the invite. You are attending the ClickHouse December 2022 virtual meetup. What meetup is this? It is this. San Francisco Bay Area ClickHouse Meetup. It is actually the oldest meetup in the United States for ClickHouse. It started back in, I think, 2018. It was before I was working for Altenity. I've been running it uh, since 2019 when I started, and we've had a lot of really great meetings. 
this is going to be another one of them. We'll talk about the agenda in just a minute. Um, so the just a couple of announcements. We are planning, we try to do these at uh, two month intervals. So we won't do one in January. We're shooting for a uh, meeting in uh, February. I believe it's the uh, around the 14th, it's a Wednesday. It will be posted shortly. So keep an eye out for that meeting invite. We don't have any talks set up for that yet. So if, if you have something fun that you'd like to talk about with ClickHouse, please feel free to attend uh, and or to, to suggest your talk. We take anything. So this is a database. Uh, we're all database enthusiasts. Uh, we take talks about what's going on inside ClickHouse, you know, sort of new features, new open source projects, applications built on top of ClickHouse. We've had really great talks on those uh, over the years. And then finally, we sometimes invite the neighbors in to say what they're doing. So for example, we had Materialize in uh, earlier this year. Uh, you know, we, we bring in other technologies, hydraulics, uh, interesting stuff based on a fork of ClickHouse. So anything that's relevant to, uh, to ClickHouse in the slightest way and where you have a topic that you just want to share. Um, there is a ClickHouse uh, Inc. Uh, meetup uh, there. The December meetup is coming tomorrow. That will be talking about interesting new features in ClickHouse. So uh, I think many of us will be attending that. Uh, I don't have any other big things on the agenda. Is there anything else that anybody would like to talk about uh, before we dive in? Okay, don't see any. Uh, any. So agenda today, we were going to have a, a, uh, a lightning talk, but unfortunately the person who was planning to give it is sick today, so uh, we won't do that. What we're going to do instead is have two talks about replacing merge tree. And uh, then we're going to have a talk from Alexi on doing uh, crazy stuff with ClickHouse. And uh, this is a talk that I'm looking forward to uh, when Alexi says do crazy stuff with ClickHouse, he means it. So uh, it should be uh, it should be pretty cool. Um, I want to give a little background on the replacing merge tree. This is one of the table engines, as you're going to learn in a few minutes if you haven't used it. It has some very interesting properties, and it uh, is particularly valuable for cases where you need to mutate data. And we'll talk about those. Both Alexander and I have used cases for that. It kind of came out of a discussion that started at the at the last uh, meetup where we began to discuss this table type in the you know sort of Q and A at the end. By the way, if you stay to the end, if you have questions about uh, about ClickHouse, we will take them. Anything we're game for anything. Uh, and then you can just go ahead and, you know, just, hey, if you have any anything you're doing with Click Custom, anything you want to know, if we can answer it, we will. So anyway, this is a follow on of that uh, conversation, which was informal. What we're going to do now is do some talks and I'm going to start. I'll kick it off. I'm going to take about 30 minutes. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to throw them into the chat. I'm just trying to see if I can see it. For those of you on YouTube, go ahead and post them into the comments. Uh, we'll forward them. Uh, and, uh, so if we, uh, you know, either way, uh, you know, if the questions are relevant to what's going on, we'll, we often try to answer them in passing. Otherwise we answer them at the end of the talk and later at the end of all talks. So with that, I'm going to dive into my talk. I'm first up and, um, let me get this to go ahead and come up into full screen. Can everybody see this? Okay, uh, if somebody can just confirm. Yeah. Yes. Great. And it sounds like because yes. you can, you can, you guys are answering. So obviously, audio is good. Great. All right. So I'm going to talk about adventures with the ClickHouse replacing merge tree engine. Um, and there's a particular use case I'll be focusing on, which we'll get into. But it has to do with getting data out of ClickHouse, or excuse me, out of MySQL, putting it in ClickHouse. We'll talk more about that in a second. So uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, I've been working on databases now for almost, I think, 40 years. I can't remember the exact day I started, but it's a while. And uh, I say 30 plus because it makes it sound like I, I'm not so old. I love databases. I've worked with about 20 different kinds. Uh, my day job is I'm CEO of Altinity, but the reason I got the job was I've worked with databases for a long time. And and we're, we're very much a, a company of nerds who are just 
really, really interested in this technology. And in fact, that's a good opportunity to introduce the, the folks on our team, uh, database geeks. Most of them are many of them way more expert than I am on ClickHouse. Uh, I like doing talks and I like uh, you know, doing more sort of tutorial stuff, but they have a huge amount of expertise and, and a number of the things in this talk were drawn directly from things that either came up in support cases or came up in this project that we're doing to uh, to mirror uh, data out of MySQL into ClickHouse. And then Altinity, we are an enterprise provider for ClickHouse. We've been around for since 2017. We run Altinity.Cloud and uh, uh, among many other projects, we wrote the Altinity Kubernetes operator for ClickHouse, which some of you on this call um, are running. So that's it, uh, end of the marketing. Uh, what I'd like to do is dive in, and I'm gonna try and scope this, Alexander, so I don't bump into your time. Uh, it's just talk about this use case. And um, there are many, many ways that you can use ClickHouse. It's, a, it's an incredibly versatile real-time analytic database. And uh, the that gives answers, uh, very fast answers on very, very large data sets. So uh, there's a particular use case though that uh, came up for us, and that is sort of looking at the differences and the capabilities of OLTP databases, which are used to drive things like e-commerce, digital marketing, uh, software-defined networking, and uh, countless other use cases. They do things like uh, log transactions, they log configuration information, uh, they log uh, you know, plans for things like marketing campaigns, so on and so forth. And MySQL, Postgres, and other databases are incredibly good at that. Uh, the problem is that they don't, uh, you know, that's not enough to, to run an e-commerce business. It's not enough to have transactions where you sell stuff. You also want to be able to understand what is going on in those transactions and think about them, uh, you know, simple examples, do funnel analysis. So somebody's coming through a website, buying things, where are the places, where are the bottlenecks? What are the things that, that cause people to drop out? If you make a change, like have recommendations, can you see the effect of, of more sales? Where are those recommendations most helpful? There's obviously things like fraud detection, so on and so forth. Uh, each of the other use cases I've mentioned here has the same issue that there are often cases where you need to analyze the transactions as opposed to execute. And so this is a provides a nice contrast to the capabilities of MySQL and ClickHouse. And in a nutshell, I mean, as I think everybody on this call knows, the big difference between this is that I, uh, you know, that explains why you would pick one database versus another is a storage organization. There are many other things, but in particular, Postgres and MySQL are uh, they are um, row-oriented databases, makes them very, very efficient for uh, doing transactions where you make small updates, you make small uh, you know, point queries, stuff that you would have, for example, in processing e-commerce transactions. But if you need to ask questions that scan all of the data or some fraction of it, uh, it uh, ClickHouse is much better organized. It can read, uh, it only reads selected columns. It does them in parallel. The columns are highly compressed. It can be literally a thousand times faster than MySQL or Postgres on analytic queries. So for this reason, that when you do the analytics, you need something like uh, uh, like ClickHouse. And in fact, a way to think about it is that what you need is your e-commerce data. You just need a copy of it in column format. And there's two ways to do this that are, uh, you know, that are, are commonly used. One is to actually have a separate analytic database that you feed to as fast as you can. The second thing is to use HTAP. And we'll probably do another talk later to talk about HTAP because it's a, it's really interesting. You have databases that are simultaneously row and, and column format uh, representations of data. But for now, this use case that came up for us was just getting MySQL data as quickly and as easily as possible out of MySQL and into uh, into in uh, into ClickHouse. And it's just like, make a copy of it and keep it up to date. Um, and these are just examples of the kinds of things that you might be putting into the analytic database so you can then ask useful questions that help your business. So that's pretty easy to say. Uh, the question is, 
okay, what's so hard about that? It's easy enough to, to state. Um, oh, here's the, and here's, by the way, how it works. Here's a standard way that you can do this. Um, Tra there's one other property of, of MySQL and, and uh, Postgres and other databases is they have a transaction log. So in MySQL, it's called a bin log. It's used for replication. Uh, they also have dump and load uh, uh, facilities. So a standard way of handling this is to do something, particularly if you want to keep it up to date, is to go ahead and do a, a dump uh, of the data, load it into ClickHouse, uh, and then what you'll do is you'll read off the transaction log. And this is an example where we're reading off the MySQL bin log, but the same principle applies for Postgres, MongoDB, and others. So again, so far so good. This is this technology, if you've been around the database business, has been uh it, you know, has has been uh you know, it's been commonly used for for decades at this point. Um so what's so hard? Uh you know how how hard can this be? Well, it turns out that to make this use case work with uh, with ClickHouse, you need to be able to mutate rows, and that's because there are just many ways that MySQL expects to be able to update information. So, for example, you have a transaction, you might need to amend it. You would actually change the value of that transaction. Uh, you might have other things like the configuration of a website. Uh, you would change that. You have network topologies defined in MySQL or defined in you know whatever relational database. They change. You want to be able to have those things, those changes be mirrored over to uh, over to ClickHouse. So that's the problem, and this is where the replicating merge tree uh, uh, helps. So. What I'm going to do now is dive in and just talk about the basics of this. And by the way, as as we're going along, I'm watching the chat. So you, if you have questions about this, feel free to pop them up, um, and I will answer them as we go along. Um, oh, by the way, Alexi, welcome. Looks like you're on the talk. Uh, just checking to see if your your audio is good. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. I'm so delighted to have you here. I've, uh, so as you know, you're 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 uh, you're number three batter here, and uh, so uh, welcome. And uh, I think I think this will be interesting. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, back to the talk. Uh, so basics. Um, so in our use case, we have a source table, and we can just start with a source table in MySQL. I'm using a kind of dumb example, but if you're a MySQL person, you probably know about the Sakila example database. I'm just using that as a sample. This is not something you would ever really do analytics on, but it shows a lot of the principles. So we start with a source table in MySQL. And one of the things we're going to do is look for a way to represent this in ClickHouse. So table is film. It's got a, you know, it's, it's got a primary key. Uh, it looks like the uh, primary key part got chopped off. Uh, oh, here it is down there. Great. Uh, uh, title, last update, got a few indexes, and it's in ODB engine. Pretty pretty normal uh, uh, database design or, or table design. So let's look at this in ClickHouse. So we can go ahead and create a ClickHouse table to manage or, you know, to manage the same data, but just using ClickHouse, uh, using ClickHouse schema. So we'll create a table, sakila.film. We're using the native uh, ClickHouse data types. These are pretty close maps to what you're seeing. Um, over on SQL, including the fact that things are nullable, uh, data type sizes. What's interesting, and the, the main difference if you look at the columns, is you'll see at the end, end we have this version column, and we have a sign column. So we'll get into what those are in just a second. The engine type we're going to use is replacing merge tree. And replacing merge tree, as we'll see, requires a version to tell it what is the current copy of the row. And so that's a this this underbar version column is uh, something that we then have to declare as part of the engine definition. And the way that the replacing merge tree works is that it has a notion of a key on the row that's basically a scope for uh, you know for identifying a unique row that can uh, you know can have different versions. And it's basically given by your order by. And one thing that we'll talk about this is, in fact, in MySQL, this this row is uniquely identified by film ID. That's a synthetic key. 
But what we can see is we've actually got some additional rows which aren't strictly necessary to, to, to uh, identify the row, but they are important because we're using, uh, this is a merge tree, this is a variation of merge tree, and we like to have an order by because it makes things go faster. In fact, it can make things 100 times faster or even more if you have a good order by. So you'll see this key, and what this is telling the replacing merge tree engine is that if you see something that has the same language ID, same studio ID, same film ID, that is one row, and anytime you see the version go up, then that's the latest version of it. So, so that's how the definition works. And here's an example that, that shows then in detail how, how we're actually gonna use this. So what this picture is showing is we are actually adding data to the, uh, uh, to the table. And the key thing here, and this is one of the reasons why I love replacing merge tree, is we don't actually delete things, we add rows. And then what we're going to do is you'll see is make a decision about which rows to show. This is a classic distributed systems technique where you put the data out and then you make it kind of a problem at read time to decide what version of it to show. So when we start by defining a film ID, let's say it's 1001, we insert it and we give it version zero. We give this sign plus one, which is not used by replacing merge tree, but you'll see how we use this in just a second. And then we give our film ID, we have our language ID, and then the rest of the data. We just insert that row. So that goes, that goes in. Let's say we come later on to update the row. We are going to add a row with version three, uh, I'm just making up a version. All it has to do is be increasing. And uh, because I'm making an update for reasons that will become apparent in a moment, I'm going to take away the old version of the row and I'm going to, uh, to add a new version of it. So I'll put minus one for the one I'm adding in and plus one, or two, taking away and, and plus one for the one that I'm, I'm adding. And then finally, later on, I'll say, hey, I, this row is disappearing. This film is no longer going to be... Uh, you know, present in our catalog, so let's just take it away. So we'll we'll give it version number five minus one. And the idea here is that consistent with the way this is a merge tree table, it's going to merge, and over time, it will collapse these rows down so that you only get the latest version. And this is very much, uh, you know, sort of very much in tune with the way that ClickHouse works, the notion of merging, and eventually getting the data to a consistent state, although not completely as, as we'll see. So I hope that makes sense. It's a pretty uh, interesting, uh, you know, it's a pretty interesting uh, way of approaching this problem of representing mutations. We'll show the details of it in just a second. Um, if you've ever used collapsing merge tree, you might ask, how does this differ, particularly from collapsing version merge tree? The collapsing version merge tree has versions, but the difference is when you take the row away, like this, this first row where we're doing of the update, its version would have to match the, uh, the original version of the row that it's taking away. This is actually kind of hard to do, particularly in distributed systems. So replacing merge tree has a much has a relaxed uh, design or lax, relaxed constraint where all you need is for the row the row ID to be, or the version to be uh, monotonically increasing. So it's kind of a, uh, it's a it's a simpler one to use and a more versatile uh, table engine for that reason. So let's uh, give an example. So we're actually gonna put a row in and here's what it looks like. So we'll just do an insert and this could be a row, an insert into any, uh, uh, any merge tree engine. Well, it could be a you know into merge tree or replacing merge tree. There's essentially no difference. We put in the film. It's Blade Runner, um, and then we select the title and the release year. And and I'm not going to do aggregation here, but the principle is the same if we're computing aggregates because I just want to illustrate what comes back when we select stuff uh, or what gets picked up in the scan. And we see we've got a title uh, Blade Runner. So there it is. It's in. It's happy. Uh, if we go back, we'll see that row again. Let's see what happens if we do an update. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do an insert. And in this case, as I mentioned, we're going to add two rows because one to take the old value away and the other one to add the new one. 
we give them the same version number as it turns out this actually works because they are uh, issued in the same order. And uh, uh, as best I can tell from looking at the code, this will always correctly order them because uh, uh, it will actually get resolved inside the blocks as you're, uh, you know, as you're doing your inserts. But what will happen after this is if we just then repeat our, uh, you know, repeat what we did, we're actually somewhat surprisingly going to see at least a couple rows. Um, and what we see here is we have the uh, the Blade Runner and you know both versions they show up and what's going on here is we're actually seeing unmerged rows so the uh it turns out that in the particular example i did you'd think that we had added three rows so you'd kind of think hey you should have seen three but what really happens here is actually in the block clickhouse will actually merge these two because it turns out that these guys have the same key it will only pick the last one so that's what we see we also see the blade runner uh, that we originally had so this is nice we have different versions of this the problem is we only wanted to see the last one so how do we do that um, well the idea here is and let's just explore what's going on if the rows are what happens in replacing merge tree is the rows are replaced when merges appear uh, occur so first one went you know when the first uh, insert went in it created a part that looked like this the second one when that when that insert went in it created a part that looked like this but only if there was a difference in the keys and i'm picking a special example here where i actually made a change to one of the other key values they in this case the language id I changed for the film, I changed it. I've also got my identifying key. Um, in that case, the part would actually have two rows because ClickHouse uh, in that particular example, uh, you know, would would see them as different and they would both, uh, you know, so they would both be in the original part. Um, if they were if they were the same, if they had the same key values, you'd only get one row in the second part. And then later on at, at its convenience, ClickHouse will merge the rows. And this is the eventually consistent part of the replacing merge tree is that the parts get merged and then the you know as the query processor or the the, the processor looks at it and it's scanning over the the blocks to merge them it will uh, notice the ordering and then it will cause the rows to disappear and in this case if you get a you know if you actually did have two different different values in that second part you would then see two rows and the old one uh, the first row would disappear completely. So it's a little bit, uh, I hope this makes sense. It's a, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a tricky way of doing this. There are some, aside from the obviously confusing issue of like, hey, did something merge? At what point did it merge? There's a really important point here, which is in ClickHouse, you can never assume that rows will merge fully. This is a really important principle in, in ClickHouse. So rows will merge up to a point. They do it at a time that you can't predict. So at any given time, there's a really good chance when you look over the data, things are unmerged. But we still want to do a query, getting back to our problem, and see a single part or see a, see a single row. How do we do that? Well, we add this thing called final. It's a keyword. You put it on the table. And what this does is it adds an extra scan that completes the merge of the RMT data that you're that you're looking at, and then it runs, for example, aggregates on the results of that. And as a result, we just get to we just get one row. So this completes that process, and we now have and we now effectively see this the the manifestation of this change. That's the heart of what this does. A lot of other stuff then follows from that. Let's talk about another issue: deletion. So um, if we want to delete a row, we uh, actually, it turns out uh, replacing merge tree as it stands right now does not support row deletion. This is a difference from collapsing merge tree or collapsing ver or version collapsing merge tree. Uh, it doesn't have a notion of deletion. And, uh, it, and in fact, what you, all you can do is just add more values to the rows, but the, but the last row value will, will always be there. So what we'll do is we'll actually use a trick where we're now going to use this sign key or a sign column that we added. We'll put that into the insert. If we do a select on that, we'll see a final row. 
and it's got the sign minus one. And what that tells us is the last operation that was this uh, on this was a delete. We now want it to disappear. If we don't do anything further, we'll always see these things, but there's a great ClickHouse trick that we can now use to make them disappear. And that is to use row policies. So row policy is a new feature that was introduced, I guess, a couple years ago in, well, it, they always existed, but uh, they now exist in a very convenient form thanks to SQL uh, role-based access control. So you can create a row policy. And what we'll do on this table is we're just gonna say, hey, you know, for anything, anybody using, uh, uh, you know, doing a select on film, we're gonna put a row policy in which says that they can only see things where the sign is not equal to minus one. So, uh, so this row policy then will cause these these final rows to you know these 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 merged rows to disappear. So if the result of the final operation leaves you with a uh, you know with a row to to be dropped, it will just it'll just disappear, and you won't see it, and it won't be added to your aggregates. Uh, it you'll get the you'll get the correct answer. So this is a totally cool trick. If it weren't for row policies, this would be very you'd have to actually implement this in SQL, which would be quite painful. But you can see the effect here. The row just disappeared. It's uh, and this is again exactly what we'd expect. Joins are kind of tricky. Um, this is a final issue of 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 using uh, replacing merge tree, and. Uh, so here's uh, an example where we're taking that film uh, uh, table and we're going to do a join against inventory, which is another table. And the the Sakila film table is going to be on the right side of the join. Well, there's a problem here because we're going to join on Sakila film. And what we'd really like to do is we'd like to add the word final here right after it because it says, hey, right side of the join, please please merge this stuff before you let it be joined. But in fact, if you put a final if you put a final keyword in there, it uh, it'll fail. It'll just give you a, a syntax error. Um, so that's a problem because uh, if we want to write the join, uh, we're either going to have to tolerate the you know having multiple rows come back, which is bad, or we can use a trick. And so there's a there's a final trick here, which is if you need to do this right now what you can do is you can work around it by joining against a subquery. And that's what we're doing right here. And subquery does like uh, does allow final, so we're, uh, we can put it in. And then we just, and then we get the expected inner join uh, uh, value that, uh, th that we want to get. So that's the basics. I'm going to talk about two performance issues and then conclude with some, some ongoing work. So um, order by. Uh, one of the early learnings, well, for me personally, was uh, order by is critical. So film ID is enough for my SQL, and that makes it happy. And in fact, a lot of my SQL is, and Postgres is arranged around primary keys, using them to access data. That ain't how it worked in ClickHouse. In ClickHouse, you've got to have a join order, uh, or excuse me, not a join order, or an order by, because that allows you to create extensive data that are that are properly organized to make queries run fast. You, you know, ordering data so that you have long stretches of data that you can then move through. It also it also helps you identify rows. Of course, there's a primary key index. And so <clears throat> what we do here is in this use case is we will pick, you know, based on you know, based on the contents of the table, we'll then generally pick additional columns which can be used to set the full join order. Uh, this means that, and the film ID always goes on the right. That's the most specific thing to ensure that the row is unique based on the film ID. And then you have these additional uh, columns, which don't necessarily, you know, aren't required to find the row, but but ensure that the order is correct. If this turns out to be, and then at that point, everything is like regular merge tree. So for example, if this order by turns out to be really long, you'll want to cut it down by using a primary key, which is a prefix of the of this order by, so that your indexes will remain small and fit in memory. For replacing merge tree, you do have to think about this. If you're using this approach, whenever you do updates, you must be careful because those additional columns that you're using in the order by, they can change. 
So for example, in Blade Runner, we could change the, you know, the language from English English to American English. Um, and what that means is because it, as far as ClickHouse is concerned and RMT is concerned, these are actually two different rows, unrelated rows. Uh, replacing Merge Tree does not know that these are connected. So you've got to drop the one and add the other. So that's a really important point. And, and that's why in general, uh, rather than just always adding the new version, we try to we try to add, uh, you know, take away the old one and add the new one. Um, another thing is partitioning, and of course, is important for for large tables. I didn't have a partition by, uh, but another thing you can do is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you can come up with partition by schemes that allow you to group the data in ways that uh, will ensure that all the all the changes are restricted to a single partition. And here's an example. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Sometimes some systems I, I know of do this by time. I'm just using int div, which this has the effect of taking the first uh, 10 million uh, keys and putting them always in the same par partition. As we get to you know 10 million, you know, key 10 million one, that will start a new partition. Uh, the, the reason we do this is it allows us to take advantage of a kind of cool property, which is called do not merge across partitions, select final. It's kind of a mouthful, but what it's doing is trying to reduce the cost of that final operation. So this, if we have to do a scan across every partition to order things and make sure that we've, you know, we've correctly, uh, you know, uh, correctly merged so that there's no duplicates, this can get really expensive. Um, if you use this partition, this setting, what it will do is, first of all, it will run faster because you're not scanning everything, but it will also allow you to parallelize within partitions. And if you go look at the code, uh, that's essentially what it does. Uh, I don't have a link to it. One note on this is it works, but we uh, there was one uh, problem that was noted. Uh, you probably want to use version 22.10 or above. Uh, there was apparently some sort of issue. I don't know if it's a regression or what, but it it ran slower and uh, unexpectedly slower in some early versions. But this is a this is again a cool feature. Um, so that gets us to final work. So RMT is a really really great, uh, uh really outstanding engine in ClickHouse and. Can you guys hear me okay? My uh yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh yeah, it just dropped out a second ago. Um they so uh, okay, okay, current work. Uh there's two things I want to highlight. I, I want to be clear that there's also there's a bunch of work in general in ClickHouse around this topic. I think the most interest some of the most interesting work is in the materialize MySQL engine. Uh that's done by Stig Bakken and his team. Uh uh and uh they have done a bunch of very interesting things around similar ideas for a similar use case. There are two specific, but they, but it's a different table engine and not really compatible with what we're using here. Uh, two things that are going on in RMT that are worth knowing about. First is to solve this, to not have to be sticking these finals and everything. And there's a one of the guys at Altinity, uh, uh, Arthur, is doing. Um, uh, is putting in a is has a PR for a feature that will just uh, put the final in automatically for you, and it solves among other things it solves that join problem that I mentioned. So this is a super uh, useful feature. The other thing is that as people are coming from from other databases, they don't have to do these kind of weird tweaks to their code to get it to work. The MySQL code just kind of works because my uh, MySQL and ClickHouse are not terribly different. So that's one I'm hoping this will get merged in the near future. It's a really, it it makes RMT a lot more usable. There's another really great uh, feature coming uh, done by uh, the guys at Content Square. Um, here's the poll number. And this is going to basically add support for that sign column that, that we're using row policies for right now. Uh, it will be built into the engine, and the engine will automatically clean up deleted rows. Uh, so it's a totally cool feature. Uh, I think at that point, with these two features and maybe some performance work, I think RMT looks like it's got potential to be an outstanding uh, feature of ClickHouse that, that's helpful for a wide range of use cases. 
All right, so that's it. Oh, one thing I should should say is that with the stuff that we use in the first section, you know, without the extra uh, features, we're still able to construct, uh, you know, continuous replication based on replication merge tree to, you know, sort of replicate things, for example, out of Aurora, bring them into ClickHouse. This works really well. Uh, and to the extent there are problems, I'd say the one, you know, sort of big outstanding problem that you get in these systems, nothing to do with ClickHouse, is dealing with schema, uh, schema evolution. But that's a problem we can talk about at some later time. It, it's not a specifically ClickHouse issue. It's when somebody changes the upstream schema, you need to be able to, to, to change it in, in ClickHouse in a consistent way that uh, avoids errors. Um, documentation. Uh, uh, so various sources here. And as I would say, I would add the uh, Stig Bakken's work, anything on the materialized MySQL. Uh, Stig, uh, Stig is a, a pretty regular contributor uh, and they have a bunch of really, really interesting ideas about this. I, I wouldn't say that we've copied them. Uh, we have, uh, I think everybody is circling around the same problem and, and uh, we all have a kind of similar way of thinking about it. So uh, that's it. I think we're we're done. I I can take questions. Uh, so there's a question from Dan Goodman. Are all these tips in the uh, knowledge base? And the answer is no. Um, what I'm hoping to do is publish them in a blog article, and then we'll push them into the knowledge base as well. Uh, the you know, but this is I think just generally. Uh, there's there's definitely a lot could be done. This talk and and Alexander's talks are our efforts to try and you know sort of share the knowledge that, that we have about these table types and learn more about them because these table types are I I'm pretty confident that I'm not using them as well as I could uh, just knowing things I've you know I've found out stuff along the way but uh, we definitely want to you know start that dialogue and get people interested in this table type because it's it's a super super feature of ClickHouse. And uh, Ramazan, you had a uh, a question about whether replacing merge tree has a, a an underbar sign column, uh, but it sounds like it sounds like we answered it. Um, so, hey, are there any other questions? Oh, here we go. Uh, all right, so here's um, okay. Here's a a great okay. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Vlacheslav. Uh, why do you need two inserts for update? One with the sign minus one, another with plus one. Only the second will be preserved, as you said. Okay, here's the key. Let me just go back because this is a really subtle point that is important to understand with RMT. So, remember when I said that, you know, when I defined the table, I had the order by as language ID, studio ID, and film ID to identify the record. All we need is the film ID. That's what would be present in MySQL or any other database. But for performance reasons, we're adding the order by additional columns in the order by because that's going to make us fast. So we have to think about we we have to think about what makes ClickHouse happy, particularly the, the query processor. And, and we absolutely have to have an order by. But what that's done is replacing merge tree uses this order by as the key. So you've effectively created a a key for the uh, for the row that is based on additional columns that can change. Normally, keys can't primary keys can't change, but language ID and studio ID they're just normal columns. They could change. As a result, whenever we do an update, the safest way to do it is to take the row away using the uh, using the old value. And then, uh, or any value for that matter, but just take the row away, uh, but ensuring that you have the key values, and then add the new row, uh, you know, with the with all values. Other use cases where you know for sure that this will not that you won't have this happen, you don't have to do this. But this is when you're reading from something like the MySQL bin, bin log that has before and am, after images, you have to do it this way, otherwise you'll end up with corrupted data. So I hope that I hope that explains it. Um, okay. So if you don't use a question from Dan, if you don't use the minus one sign call, can you use this uh, to scan over time? Um, 
Uh, yeah, actually, uh, so that's a really good point. Uh, there are other ways to look at, in fact, I'll just say there are other ways to look at this and I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Alexander. I'm gonna stop my share if you wanna just go cause I don't wanna eat into your time. Uh, the and Alexander has a bunch more interesting stuff to say on this. Uh, if you don't use the minus one uh, sign column, can you can you use this to scan over time? The answer is yes. If you want to see a log, actually a good way to do it is just go ahead and stick it in a regular merge tree. In, in other words, there's two ways to represent data. There's a mirror image. This is representing a mirror image of data in MySQL. But the other thing you can do is stick stick all the records in into uh, an ordinary merge tree with a timestamp and then let the queries figure out how they use it. And among other things, they can see the evolution of data over time. So, and that's actually an important use case. And before there, there's a, I've seen a number of applications that actually do exactly that. All right, uh, this is great. I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, go ahead and turn this over to uh, Alexander. So Alexander, feel free to dive in. Okay, uh, should I enable vi my video? Uh, I'm going to take mine away, uh, if you wish. Uh, you guys can... Okay, I don't have permissions, but okay. Oh, uh, oh, weird. Okay, let me let me. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll I'll try and fix that while you're talking. Okay, no problem. One second, let me start my share screen one more time. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Yep. Perfectly. So uh, thank you so much, Robert, because you explained already almost mm, everything about this replacing merge tree table. So I just need to add some some uh, real cases uh, which we use in our company. But uh, first, it's my name, Alexander Dubikov. I'm uh, living in Germany, and I'm a CTO and co-founder of QXAP uh, BV with Lorenzo Mangani. He's also here it's, uh, in uh, in room, and I'm. Uh, Open source enthusiast and I develop a developer of many open source projects, uh, most related in uh, voice RP uh, area. Uh, and I like uh, love roles, hacking, uh, communi in communication, brainstorming, and big data analysis. So QXAP BV, it's just short, it's a company which uh, R&D and based on Amsterdam and in Valencia, and we have uh, remote DevOps in more than 10 countries, and uh, our case, it's exactly open source, with RP, ATC communications, and uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, last, uh, our last project is Quillen, probably it's already, uh, Lorenzo presented already uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it's starting to very, be very, very, very popular. So, uh, warning, it's here, it's experimental content, and uh, be aware about this. So, uh, telecom. Um, we have created uh, application uh, in QXAP, it's called HEPIC, uh, and uh, just to solve some issues, uh, which is telecom, it's very, very common. Because in telecom, we have a lot of um, data and which is uh, based on events. It can be uh, C protocol, it can be RTCP, RTP uh, packets, and et cetera, et cetera. You have to, to collect all these events, to store this data in database and make analysis. And uh, this, the problem is uh, you have to generate the transactions based uh, on statuses. Yeah? For example, if you, you make a call to your, let's say parents to your girlfriend and uh, calls uh, changes the status from calling, ringing, uh, connecting, uh, disconnecting, etc. This is exactly the most, uh, most case in telecom where you have to use uh, similar like transactions. And uh, we, uh, in before we use, or let's say we try to use uh, many different databases uh, starting from MySQL, Postgres, uh, Cassandra, etc. And uh, at, and uh, thanks God, it's we have <laughs> found ClickHouse almost uh, six years ago, and uh, we, we was excited how design of this database has been created, and uh, this column column database is great, and the speed which uh, ClickHouse shows it was amazing. Yeah, so it's wide speed, and but uh, of course uh, it has some. Uh, side effects because uh, ClickHouse is uh, a 
analytics database yeah and uh, like uh, so already robert said um all data has been stored in col column now yeah and this avoid um this is not let's, let's say easy to use such feature like transactions or and uh Thanks also to Alexei's team, what they released with um, engine type, which called uh, has name replacing merge tree, uh, which probably uh, which solves uh, almost all issues in transactions. And uh, but as I said, it has some 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 side effects. Um, with MT, it's normally like uh, it's already. Um, Robert said it uh, inserts a lot of in, uh, data, and uh, after after that you have just to duplicate this data uh, multiple times, and uh, at the end you have to use um, final um, keywords to to avoid these duplications. So it's here is a small example how how it uh, uh, looks like. We have. A replace merge tree table which has a couple of columns inside it's a daytime uh, versioning in our case in the in telecom we use a versioning based on milliseconds which uh, for example we insert data and we take current the kind the current time step of events and uh, insert this data to to table and uh, and so on so on so on but based on order by we generated uh, key value, a uh, unique key, which uh, based on uh, uh, date, uh, date time of transactions and uh, unique transactions idea. It can be co ID, it can be different uh, values, which depends of your of your scenario. It can be also all, uh, user ID, etc. And uh, we use also partitioning. Okay? We, based on the daytime partitioning, we create normally, we use daily partition in our application. Uh, which generated each each for each day we generated a lot of data and uh, and so on. The problem is here uh, it's replace merge free table it's always should uh, receive the full transactions which um, based uh, okay let me let me make it an example. For example, we receive one call and call it's in state uh, ringing yeah. Uh, we insert this data to the, this, the table with full information. It uh, should be, it can be also A number, it can be B number, and uh, start of uh, call transactions, uh, ringing time, some additional information which related also for events which is happening in this call. And we insert this record to, uh, to table. Once calls go state to connected, we have to keep in transaction status inside of our application. And we insert this record one more time. Uh, just ma we make a version a little bit higher, insert it, and waiting for next event. The next event is coming. We ins we make a new uh, new version inside of these transactions, and we insert this data inside a uh, table, and so on, so on, so on. Uh, this timestamp, what we uh, like I said already, we're using for this versioning to de determine the latest uh, transaction state. This is what, as I said, it's side effect. You have to 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 develop something like internal transactions inside your application. But it's most cases, uh, it's applications does uh, it's very very easy. And uh, to avoid this duplication, uh, use final. Robert already said already about this. Uh, will uh, avoid this duplication. It's normally uh, if you use final and at the end of uh, table name. Uh, this uh, query will just take all data from disk uh, and from memory if it's inserted, and uh, uh, we will we'll delete all uh, duplicated roles which has a lower uh, version uh, inside, and we'll provide you uh, only the final status, yeah, the highest version in here. Of course, it's, this is very very expensive, and uh, to uh, to avoid it. We I, we exactly can show some some tricks how you can use uh, you how you can optimize it. Of course, Prevere uh, could not be used in uh, in normal way because uh, you have to scan all data, you have duplicate duplications, and this also makes some side effects of uh, performance. So uh, in uh, in our cases, uh, I would like to show 
some good um, points uh, in version 22.6. Uh, it has uh, one guy. It's open uh, ticket, which uh, shows a case when you can use um, union O. Uh, you can just split, um, let's say, query which you normally use final to separate queries, uh, make union O uh, on this replacement tree table, and it shows uh, almost 500% uh, better better performance. Um, the guys from ClickHouse uh, did a great job. They did uh, multiple uh, thread pool, uh, which also makes similar way uh, to split data, uh, split queries uh, uh, between multiple uh, queues, and to make aggregation uh, on uh, which uh, with uh, with threads re uh, returns and uh, make parallel um, selections. So, if you in version below, I'm strong, strongly recommended to update it to this version 22.6 and up. It will shows better performance. A second one, uh, to avoid these duplications, uh, you can use uh, special functions. It's, it's, it's uh, comment is called optimize, which you can uh, execute with optimize um, comment on table. You can also provide or just optimize for completely full table, or you can, if you use some partitions, you can also optimize a special partition. Let's, for example, if you have daily traffic like in telecom, and daily traffic inserts a lot of data, uh, and uh, from new day, a new day, we uh, application will create a new partition, and all data, uh, all partition is already let's say frozen. Yeah, it's all data. You you can do whatever you want. And you can apply optimize on this partition, which will remove uh, all duplications. And uh, it will also, let's say, um, merge all uh, small parts inside of the partition. And you will have the final, final, final status of uh, without duplication, which you can use normally. As uh, Robert also said, you can use don't merge across partition, select final, this, which means it has two effects. Yeah. So first, you uh, if you use this params, it will not um, go to multiple partitions and just take one partition. Yeah. And will uh, will not duplicate across multiple partitions. So it will make better results. And so second one, if partition is uh, has level more than zero. And this means it's in optimized way. It will also uh, shows uh, better performance. Uh, I will show you uh, in the next uh, minutes. And uh, what I'm very proud, uh, based on our experience uh, in QXIP, we, uh, op we discussed with Alexei Milovidov, um, it was almost a couple of months ago. And uh, we uh, asked it for a feature request, uh, which released uh, in version 22.10. And uh, what this uh, feature does, you can create a uh, replication merge tree table and put settings uh, mean age to force merge seconds. And you can define here, then um, click out, we will make a deduplication. Yeah, it's, uh, this means what? ClickHouse will automatically, after this timeout, will automatically remove everything, all duplicates in your partitions, and make a partition to final states. So you can avoid this optim optimize, which normally now uh, for our customers and so on, we use uh, using uh, external CronTab script. Yeah, or oh, sorry, it's or you use CronTab script, or we in, we implement it also in now in, in inside our application. Periodically, we check if partition is already old. And it's not uh, doesn't have a level of compactions. We executed with optimize in our application and uh, and make a final state. So let's uh, make a demo. One second. Let me share my screen. Green. So, do you see my screen? Big yes. Yeah. It looks, it looks great. So, uh, let's uh, first. Uh, it's for Alexei. So we use version twenty two eleven. Yeah. So it's the latest, uh, latest version. 
First, let's create a simple table. So we create, we select final, and so let's insert a lot of data inside. It's uh, each uh, each uh, insertion. It's created hundred millions records. We insert three times, which means what normally we will have 300, 000, uh, 300 uh, millions uh, records, but only hundred millions records will be um, should be displayed as as final state. So it's pretty fast. Inserted, yeah. So let's select, uh, let me check, count right now. So it has uh, some duplicates, yeah. Of course, uh, ClickHouse already decided, ah, it's too many um, records um, has been inserted to this table and it does automatically some deduplication, yeah. So it's, uh, it has internal logic, yeah. So, uh, if we will use final, kaboom. So it's almost 1.3 uh, seconds. Yeah? It's to read all data and this shows what unique records here is 100 million records. Yes, what is exactly what we need. Let's do uh, some optimization inside. So we optimize this table or this partition it's exactly like i said you can do or optimize partition or you can just avoid it and optimize full table it's take a little bit because of course it's make some magic and remove duplications and uh, make a dirty job for us so it's 12 seconds is done let's see what we have right now Boom, without final, it's 100 million records. This final, 100 million records. But you see, it's already, it's uh, this um, query, it's, this final, it's already much, much faster. It's not take 1.3 seconds, it's take already 395 uh, seconds. So let's see if uh, do merge across partitions final will not, will make some magic. Yeah? We'll set this, this param and execute this query one more time. Kaboom. We have now 68 milliseconds versus 395. So it's almost <laughs> almost four, uh, four, uh, 40 times, uh, uh, yeah, 40 times faster, yeah? almost. But no, theoretically, it's a question for Alexei. Theoretically, this uh, query yeah, and this query should be uh, take identical time, but why? This final, it's anyway, it's take six, 69 milliseconds. And without final, it's take only two seconds, two milliseconds. Yeah. Somebody uh, has stolen yeah. 67 you're, you're uh, right, milliseconds. Uh, the problem is not that the query with final is slow, it, it is actually fast. The problem is that the query without final is just too fast. It is <laughs> too special up to. <laughs> Very special optimizations. Okay, but you see, it's we probably um, your guys can also do some some tricks here, and uh, yeah, time should be exactly the same. But okay, it's sixty nine milliseconds. Uh, it's already light fast, fight uh, fast. Yeah, light speed. It's already uh, already great. So it's uh, exactly to show how it works. This uh, do merge not partition select final. Yeah. Now let's show me you you this uh, feature which uh, I why what we asked Alexei to implement it let's drop our table so dropped and we create same table and here we put the settings mean age to force merge seconds 10, yeah. So 10 seconds, why I put 10 seconds? Because normally in our case, it will be 86,000 uh, something uh, uh, seconds, which means what it's once a uh, new day will come, uh, ClickHouse will start optimization. But we found what 
Um, it's not exactly this time, yeah. So it's Clickhouse takes only one part, uh, merge, make timeout, make another uh, another timeout, and so on, so on. Very for just to, to not waste your time, guys. It's uh, you put 10, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, create it. Let's create put some data inside. Sorry, my laptop is a little bit slow <laughs> to insert 300 million records. So we insert it. Uh, let's see how many records we have. Just to you guys. Yeah, same you. So let's check how many partitions we have. Nine. Okay, nine. Oh, seven. Okay, six. Okay. Six partitions, okay. Let's see. This uh, execute this final. Final, it's one point three seven. Yeah, it's normal. Let's execute result final to see what's going on. Okay, data data is, has been reduced, removed. Let's see one more time. Ah. We have two partitions. Almost done, yeah. Let's wait. Wait, wait, wait. When this will be with final stage. Ah, well, at least. So now let's see if it's, it does exactly what we need. Let's execute this final. Okay, three uh, hundred million records, and let's execute without final. Same. Kaboom. It works. Thank you, Alexei. Wow, I did not even expect that it will work. <laughs> I also, <laughs> honestly, yesterday I also opened even, even uh, I was a little bit in paranoia mode because yesterday I tried to with this feature uh, here and I set exactly 120 sec seconds and it was not executed exactly after 120 seconds. So it was executed, but it only takes... Um, it takes only one partition. So it's, uh, it's something like once... They merge two partitions. It looks like it's my my assumption. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. It's to take two partitions after this timeout, merge, remove duplications, and make exit. Yeah, or make sleep or something like this. And after some timeout, it's come back again and try to uh, to to merge the next part. So it doesn't do at once. Maybe we can also implement some some parameters which can make. Uh, at once, at once, yes, just. Mm -hmm. You know, we already implemented. There is yet another setting. Yes, I know. It's a mean H to force merge partition only. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I know. It's, I check it. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work as expected. But we can check it later. We can discuss in ticket if you want. Mm -hmm. I have so, a but, question. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Alexander. No, no, no. Go, it's, but oh, this is what I, I. I'm very, 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 very thankful for Alexei's team because this is feature solved uh, a lot of problems. Yeah. So you now you guys you can use this replication merge tree table without any, yeah, any any assumptions. What it doesn't work as expected. So it's uh, Clickhouse will do this for you. So you should not execute any more optimize uh, table. It's will done automatically because. I read some some articles which guys try to use multiple tables, uh, make select uh, table from uh, hot data to uh, to cold data, transfer uh, transfer from uh, replication merge tree to normal uh, normal tree table. It's it's some workarounds which I could not understand. And uh, here with uh, with with params, it will help a lot. Yeah. So now it's honestly, it's I can say. Clickhouse is almost uh, ready to be o o OTP in database. Yeah. yeah. I, so there's a question from Dan Goodman with uh, <clears throat> he and his question is with do not merge across partitions select final. It's basically useless if you can have row versions across partitions. Correct. Say a call happens that rolls over midnight, and I was I had the same question about how you handle that case. Uh, okay. Normally, now in our cases, we have a time, time, uh, time start of 
a start, a start time of transactions, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we keep it inside of our application and we have core ID. And we, we always will insert to the same, same partition. We, we ah, don't so have this problem. You'll use the same start time. That, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you'll yeah, use yeah. that to, to Yes, 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 it's okay. exactly because I, yeah. I understood what, what because very before I said, you have some, let's say, uh, side effects, what you have to use internal transactions, uh, yep. tracking inside of your application. And we yep. use a CDR start. It's called call data record start. Yeah. So once we have seen the first invite uh, of a transaction, or let's say first event of transaction, we start, um, uh, we start based on call ID, internal transactions ID, plus CDR start with a start yep. of transaction. And we always will insert data to the same partition. So we yep. doesn't have this problem. We don't have this problem. Great. And you can still have the, the the time of last update, but just as a normal column that's not in the order by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 OK, that's uh, Dan, I think that, that answers yeah. the question. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I yeah, actually do great. the same exact thing in another table, uh, actually in, in BigQuery. But I do the exact same thing for another data set that can roll over um, midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's it's it, because look, based on our experience with Homer Hepic, we it's uh, it's the best way to to keep transactions um, in good stage. Yeah. Uh, yep. So, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so. let's just see. I don't see. Um, uh, oh, okay. So here's a question. I uh, from we've got some questions coming in from uh, from YouTube. Uh, would uh how does minage to force merge seconds work in a replica or shard setting uh if i recall correctly zookeeper is syncing parts if so would all instances need the setting on um unfortunately i my my I, I did not test in replica in zookeeper stuff but theoretically it's uh, it's just uh, internal settings yeah so it should should do yep. exactly the same so it should uh, tell the final uh table uh, remove this uh, uh, remove this uh, parts yeah. uh, after this timeout. Um, Alexei here's... can correct correct me I... if uh, if I'm wrong, but I think it's uh, you should work this way. Uh, yeah. So basically, you can uh, modify this setting on every replica, and it will work as expected. But even if you will forget about it, and simply set it on just a single replica. It will also work because every replica participating in the decisions on what parts will be merged. So the replica when you specify this, uh, where you specify this setting, will just ask for merging these parts as you expected. Cool. Uh, here's an easy one. Uh, what if a partition size is too big for a single part? Ooh, good question. Sasha, do you want to answer or? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, parts will not be merged. Yeah, yeah. You it's still will because um, yeah. no hands, no cookies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no free. There's no free lunch. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so, uh, hey, uh, Alexi, I have a question for you, which is, you know, there's lightweight delete, there's work on lightweight deletes, there's this, and I, do you have a, you know, sort of a, a, you know, like a vision in mind for how these two features work together? Because for rapidly mutating uh, data sets, RMT just looks really, really powerful. It's, you know, once you understand how to use it and with the features that you guys have described and sort of uh, some of the ongoing work, uh, it's a very, very powerful, uh, data type, and I'm just wondering where you, you know, how you see it comparing to, to lightweight deletes. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it uh, that re replacement merge tree and these uh, settings uh, represent something like ad hoc solution. This solution is all right. It works. It works for advanced users, but we also need something really straightforward. So you just write a delete and nothing else. No magic, is, it should yep. work as in other databases. Do you think, um, and so, and there are clearly cases where I know that 
you know, we've, we had a run a while back at, at lightweight deletes and the case we were looking at was uh, deleting tenants, you know, making them disappear, but that's actually quite different from what we see in, in my SQL or, you know, like when we're, when we're replicating from my SQL or a number of other use cases where you have a lot of small deletes or excuse me, you know, like sort of small mutations coming through. And I'm just curious if you see this as something that would persist over time, or do you think lightweight delete would eventually subsume this and just give you, you would just issue a delete and that's how you would, and, and under the covers, it would do the right thing. Uh, there are a lot of different scenarios and some of them are uh, more difficult to implement efficiently. So what about absurd? Or you would say insert ignore or insert on duplicate key update. Mm -hmm. What about unique key constraint? We don't have it in ClickHouse, but maybe we should. Mm -hmm. And many of these uh, scenarios are especially difficult to correctly implement in a replicated scenario, especially if you have significant latency between replicas. Mm -hmm. And uh, frequent uh, delete queries is just a uh, just a start to all of this complexity. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we'll see continued evolution on this problem. Uh, as they, you know, it's sort of, you know, to address the, like the upsert, I think is a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know in your, our use case, we have the advantage that we do have a, we have an Oracle, which is establishing the sequence ID and that happens to be my SQL. So we get a, you know, and there's various tricks you can use, but the point is you can get a monotonically increasing ver uh, version. Uh, if the users don't have that somehow from their application, then then using replacing merge tree gets a lot harder. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, sometimes I, I'm reading about some competitors of ClickHouse and some of them tend to say like, we are HTAP database. We supporting both analytical and transactional workloads. But next day, I'm reading some article from a user of this system. And in this article, I, I see they writing, we tried to just using absurd, but performance degraded. And the developers did not recommend to use absurd. So there is no magic. You can, maybe someone can say, we have implemented HTAP database, but currently it is far from being true. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I I had some experience with that because if you if you use PingCap, for example, it orders things by you know basically by the primary key value in the because it basically stores things as rows and then automatically transposes them to columns, but you can't change the sort order. So you yeah, it's great you can you have everything, you know, you have things in columnar format, but if you can only order by, uh, you know, by your by your primary key, that's an arbitrary order as far as uh, performance is concerned and actually is often a pretty bad one. So th that has a, that I was sort of surprised to hit that limitation. I think the way ClickHouse does it is much better. Speaking of ClickHouse, do you want to talk about crazy things you could, I think we got the questions. Thank you everybody for awesome, awesome questions. I don't see anything open. Alexander, thank you so much for the talk. Alexi. Yeah, uh, we, I have yeah. only just a showcase, one showcase of how we implement it in, in telecom, if you want, uh, just very short. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll turn it so, over to Alexi. To yeah, just, stuff. just two cases, because um, I also want to mention it. Uh, replication merge, replication merge, merge tree table. It's nice, but how you would, uh, can use this data um, in inside of ClickHouse, and uh, also what you mentioned already, what uh, fraud, fraud. It's the most common problem in telecom, which cost billions of billions of dollars, 
in work yeah and uh, in our company we exactly use um, click to to make fraud detection based on this replication orchestrate table and we created materialized view uh, which uh, automatically receives data from um, this table with latest status and uh, how many minutes for example which destination which country use a code and we automatically uh, take this data insert a table and send uh, data to Aurel engine, for example, the external application and the customer or user can get alerting uh, in real time. So it's a, before it's a fraud even happened. Yeah. So you can also touch machine learning, you know, <laughs> something like open chat uh, GPT. Yeah? <laughs> so it will help you uh, to prevent uh, to lose money. Yeah? And uh, exactly the showcase, what I want to show you guys, it's exactly it's uh, Lorenzo can help me. One second, let me share my screen one last time and tell me if it looks okay. Looks good. Yeah, so I'm I'm calling to Lorenzo. Lorenzo, I'm calling you. And you see it's 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 already uh one second, Lorenzo. Let me call you in ringing state. I call you back or discon please disconnect. One second, let me call to Lorenzo one more time to see how this replication merge tree table is working. You see init ringing. Yeah, it's I'm calling to Lorenzo. Calling, 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 ringing. Lorenzo, you can pick up. So connected, yeah. You see? This is exactly how this replication merge tree table works in our in our case. And finished. Kaboom. So it's a very, very good case. Thank you so much. Cool. Quick question for you. In yeah. the materialized section, you mentioned that you can do alerting. Um, yes. For actually handling the um, you know, uh, action on alerting, are you just constantly running some query looking for some certain result? Um, yeah. Or... yeah. So normally we, we, we create materialized view. It's uh, for our detection stuff. We created special table ex ex external table which normally make a select join. You know, you can def define some re record, some rules. If user has has uh, more minutes than in this in time interval, we with a select will take this record and insert to another table, which uh, can insert data to external 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 rail engine, which our application and it makes uh, alerting based uh, pre mediation, post mediation, etc. So this is how it works. So it's very cool. It's uh, ClickHouse uh, <laughs> give you possibility to do it uh, without any headaches. If you're running the query from some externally timed thing, why not just insert the results from there uh, rather than using a URL engine insert? Ah, because we want to to use our own application, which makes some, let's say, more more advanced stuff. Yeah, because you have you can. For example, in in transactions, you have only one record, yeah. So uh, once one stage, and we would like to make uh, inside aggregation on main main destinations, yeah. And therefore, we use external real engine, and this is external real engine connected to this application, and inside of this uh, uh, application, we can generate it. Uh, alert SMNP alert. Yeah, we can use uh, send to your Slack to your to your mobile phone SMS. So it's a little bit flexible. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Cool. And, and uh, also, uh, what uh, last time? What uh, what I want to mention is we have this block within Dev. Uh, it's an application which based on also on ClickHouse. It can read all type of log QL, uh, prompt QL, and et cetera, et cetera. It can um, be drop requested in Grafana, uh, like uh, Loki stuff, uh, and can also connect uh, with metrics with uh, this logging. So go to this uh, website. You will find a lot of nice articles what, which guys posted here. And you will like it. And um, with Quirin, we have also open, open source version as well. So enjoy. Thank you, thank you, Robert, so much. Shem. Oh, thanks. Awesome talk. Really, fit, and it really fit on the plugged onto the back of mine really nicely. Uh, hey, Alexi, uh, you're on. Tell us about crazy ways we can, crazy things we can do in ClickHouse. 
Okay, with pleasure. Let me share my screen. And I got it set so you guys can do, I, I, at least presenters, you can do video. Sorry, that took a while to figure out how to turn it back on again. Okay, I hope you see it. Yep. Perfect. So I will tell about some unusual applications and unusual capabilities of ClickHouse. Some of them you might probably already know. Some of them will be new. I hope will be new for you. So let's start. First, you need to install ClickHouse. The most easy way to install ClickHouse, the latest build, is to run this command. URL HTTPS ClickHouse.com pipe sh. Don't worry, it is pipe sh. It is not sudo sh like many other commands. And it will do everything for you. If you are worrying, just remove this, run curl https clickhouse.com and you will get a script you will be able to read. So what it will do? It will download a single binary without dependencies. And this binary works on every platform. Uh, so this script works on every platform, Linux, Mac, FreeBSD, I'm, I don't think you are using FreeBSD, but probably your older brother does. So tell, tell him that ClickHouse exists. And even on Windows, uh, you can use ClickHouse in WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. It works on x86, 64 ARM, PowerPC, and if you want to use ClickHouse on Risk Five, tell me, and I will provide you a secret binary. It works even without installation. Just download it, run it, and it will work. Let's look what is inside. So this script will download it and asking you for running. If you just run this binary, you will get a list of options, a list of commands. And some of commands are pretty familiar to you, like client, like server. By the way, this is just a single binary and it contains everything. Client, server, and 20 different things, uh, 20 other commands. Some of them probably not familiar to you, like click how, click house. Ah, by the way, so many things like click how, what is click house static files disk uploader? What is click house hash binary? What is click house git import? What is click house obfuscator? It sounds cryptic. What it is? Click house obfuscator. It is a tool to anonymize data sets. You have existing data set. You can mix it through this tool and get a new data set of the same size. The usage is pretty easy. Uh, you define the structure, input format, output format, some random number, optional source, and result. And you will get a new data set. This data set does not exist. It is generated. It is similar to your existing data set, but all these search phrases are not real. But if they contain some words frequently, these words will be also presented in the resulting data, data set like C, party, something interesting, Minecraft bug, and the distribution of uh, relative distribution of the data will be also almost as in the existing data set. And it is useful for performance testing, load testing. And you can get a new data set uh, smaller or larger, just specify the limit. If you have data set with 1 million records, you can generate data set of 1 trillion records, just specify larger limit, and it will just 
improvise. Uh, you can learn the model and then reuse this model multiple times, even in parallel. And if you specify different random seed, you will get different data sets. I used it for load testing. I was having only 1 million records, but generated 1 trillion records to test ClickHouse Cloud and you, how it will scale. And you know what? It scales pretty well. Okay, another tool, ClickHouse Format. What it does? The most simple usage is to provide a query, here it is, simply uh, for ClickHouse format. And it will pretty print it. You can add colors. You can print in one line. You know this tool, nothing surprising. But there is one secret option. This secret option is named Obfuscate, similarly to ClickHouse Obfuscator. So you provide you provide some table like with some name business secrets and it will format this query replacing these names to some different names what it is this word I don't even know I am not a fluent English uh, speaker. But this is something interesting. This is not real uh, names. They are improvised. And I can provide different ran random numbers. And these names will change. So now the table be becomes gun science. And it contains columns like touch grenade inclusion. I don't want to work in a company that has these tables. This company does something suspicious. Uh, but the key parts of the query, like merge tree, kept unchanged. And you can uh, pipe, you can provide a whole script, create table, insert, select. All these identifiers will be changed consistently. Hey, Alexi. Yeah. Um, I just want to, when you get to the next breaking point, there's a couple questions that came up on the uh, the pipe to SH, and I'll just, I just want to maybe get to them early so that we don't have to have people waiting all the way to the end to get their questions, if that's okay with you. Uh, do these questions, uh, are these questions interesting? Yes, they're they're in the uh, there's one in the Q and A and there's one in the chat. Actually, I uh, actually one on uh, one on YouTube. Excuse me. Okay, so after this slide, yep. uh, so you can use ClickHouse format obfuscate if you want to share your queries, your scripts. If you want to ask a question for ClickHouse community, but you don't want to show off your table definitions just uh, pipe into ClickHouse format with obfuscate option and it will produce something really interesting, mysterious and surprising and unusual. And we will be able to answer your questions. Okay, so what questions about pipe.sh? Okay, so uh, pipe to SH. So first one from Ramazan. It would be nice to be able to download a specific version, like curl, HTTPS, clickhouse.com, v22.11, and then pipe to SH. Is that possible? Currently not, but I'm thinking about implementing this feature. Okay, great. Um, second one coming off uh, YouTube. At the beginning with curl, uh, with uh, curl pipe SH, you say with or without install. Does that mean it will update an existing instance? I'd assume not, but it is worth it's worth asking. Uh, no, you can simply run ClickHouse isolated into another directory. Uh, you can 
provide another configuration file for a server, it will not replace the existing instance unless you will install it. If you want to replace, simply write ClickHouse install and it, it will replace the existing binary, but you can run ClickHouse local, ClickHouse client, whatever as well. Great, thank you very much. Okay, let's look at another tool. And this tool you probably will never expected to find inside ClickHouse. And you will be surprised that we have it in the same binary. In every ClickHouse installation, there is a tool named ClickHouse Git Import. And it allows you analyze your code, your code base with ClickHouse. Every code base, any Git repo repository, not necessarily ClickHouse, it can be QRIN repository from Lorenzo or Hepic or whatever. And the usage is unusually simple. Run it simply without any parameters. Or uh, to know what it will do, run it with uh, help parameter. It will give you the full, in full instruction. So, but first we need to figure out how it is possible to import Git repository into ClickHouse. What is Git? Some people think Git is a distributed version control system. Some people think it is a content addressable blockchain graph distributed database. It is slightly more close to the truth. But the author of Git, Linus Torvalds, saying that Git is the stupid content tracker. And uh, looks like this is actually what it is. Okay, whatever it is, we can take the database from Git and load everything into ClickHouse. If I run this command, it will generate three files in a TSV format. Uh, commits TSV, the smallest file, file changes, and line changes. And here are three files to be imported into three tables. You can import these files into ClickHouse. If you don't like ClickHouse, you can import them into MySQL, but you will not be happy with it. Better to use ClickHouse every time. And uh, it allows you to do a lot of analytical queries to answer every possible question. For example, uh, what is the average code age in a file or across different files? Or what authors have code most likely to be removed in a certain time? Or take every author of the code and for every other author of the code, calculate the number of times one author likes to remove the code of another author. So you will have a group of people that like to uh, rev uh, make revenge in the code base by removing the code of other authors. It should be interesting, so let's try this tool and let's try to make exactly what I described. What authors rewriting another author's code? Let me try to read this query. So there is line changes table. It contains for every commit 
uh, for every chunk of code, like diff, uh, it contains the old line and the new line and the old, old author and the new author. And the old lines will be uh, labeled as minus one with this uh, sign column. And we will exclude uh, punctuation and empty lines. There is a line type column. Okay, and let's do group by previous author and the new author. And I see that, for example, Nikolai Kochetov, my friend, he likes to remove my code. I did not know he is my friend. Why he is removing my code? But nevertheless, I am removing the code of Nikolai Kochetov as a revenge, but looks like he is removing more of my code than I am removing of his code. But actually, it is all right because I like, you know, I like to remove every code from ClickHouse. I'm improving ClickHouse by removing the wrong parts of it and ClickHouse becomes better. Okay, well, it, it was about ClickHouse, but what about other repositories like LLVM? For LLVM, I see some interesting people like Chris Latner. So Chris Latner likes to remove the code of Raid Spencer. But Raid Spencer removing the code of Chris Latner and, and what else? Yeah, pretty interesting analytics. I will not dig into details. I want to give you also, also give you a chance to make this research. Next tool, and this tool is familiar to many uh, many users. Clickhouse local. What it is? It's like Clickhouse server, but without a server. It is just a serverless engine, a tool you can run to process local files, text files, JSON, binary files. You can do conversion between formats. Take CSV, convert to JSON. Take JSON, do aggregation, convert to protobuf. Take protobuf, convert to parquet files. And you can use every integration that ClickHouse has. You can query data from external data sources, not only files, S3, uh, HTTP servers, MySQL servers. So you run ClickHouse local, do ClickHouse query, but on top of MySQL server. It is really powerful and if I will list all the capabilities, uh, it will be, a very long list. But let me also highlight some unusual usages, crazy usages of this tool. And it is interesting because let's imagine you have a machine, a server, and there is absolutely nothing on this server, only Linux. You have no tools, no familiar tools like grab, set, uh, cut, nothing existing. And what you only have is ClickHouse local. And surprisingly, you can get everything <coughs> with the help of ClickHouse local. One example is uh, this is quite a useful tool named PV, Pipe Viewer. Uh, 
you're probably familiar with PV, but if not, let me <clears throat> let me demonstrate just a little. I hope uh, I hope you will see this. What pipe viewer is doing? Ah, I already have this comment. So if we run some comment, pipe viewer will just display a progress uh, the speed of this comment. But the question is why you have to write two letters PV if you can instead write 100 of letters, click house local minus minus progress minus minus input format line as string output format line as string query select star from table and let me check what it will what it will do i just substituted clickhouse local instead of pv Ah, actually, it, it is slightly different. We need just select select star from table. Oops, not quite interesting. Let me let me copy this comment. <clears throat> so it is also showing a progress bar, but this progress bar is much more interesting. Probably not the best application of ClickHouse Local, but kind of nice to know that it exists. Okay, what about the replacement for grep? So you have a log file. You want to grab uh, grab something, some string. And if you using grep, it will take slightly less than a second. There is another version of grep written in Rust, name it RG. I like it, it works faster, 0 0.2 uh, seconds. But why you have to use grep if you want to, you, if you <laughs> really want to use ClickHouse local? I like to use ClickHouse local for everything. And I will simply pipe this file into ClickHouse local I will specify that every line will be interpreted like a string. And I will select count from table filtering by this condition. It is the same as doing grab. And it works. It works fine. The only problem it is slower than grab and slower than rg today uh, i know we will improve it but actually you don't have to you don't have to process it like this instead you can connect to the server create a table uh, with merge tree engine insert the data from file into this table and if you will do basically the same grab from merge tree table it will take, take just 0 0.9 seconds so who is faster we are faster we are even faster than rust grab rg finally Okay, some unusual application of ClickHouse local. Let me let me show it to you. So I will run ClickHouse local on, on my machine. And I have a task. I want to use ClickHouse to analyze ClickHouse itself so clickhouse will look at itself and find some insights inside itself 
how I will do it. I will select from file and as a file, I will provide ClickHouse binary on my machine. I will interpret it like a binary file containing just bytes. Hmm. Interesting. And I know what it is. It is ELF. Yes, I can read the I can read any text directly from ASCII codes. But let's do something more interesting. Let's calculate the average byte number inside our binary. Uh, Robert, could, could you please guess what it will be? You have five seconds. It's going to be have... 126 or 127. 127? No, it is 85. You are not correct. You, you will receive nothing for your... Huh. <laughs> I, could, yeah, I couldn't have guessed that. Why it is 85? I don't know. But we will try <laughs> to analyze it. And I have very interesting way to make this analysis. Analysis. I will do something really strange. So I will run ClickHouse local. I will select the bytes from the binary. But I will uh, order these bytes by a function named Morton Decode. And what this function is doing, okay, no time to think, let's just run this command. It is apparently not very fast. But the upside, it is rendering a Christmas tree in my terminal. I don't know why, just a coincidence. Uh, and it is a half of Christmas tree, but... But nevertheless, I will be happy with even a half of Christmas tree. It is doing some data science. <laughs> yeah, when you're writing... Uh, shell script one liner it is definitely a data science and uh, as a result it, it has generated uh, a png file a picture let me open this picture oops what it is do you see this this picture uh, because it is really sur surprising what it can be. Uh, yeah, I could see it. It looks it looks like a generated landscape. Sorry, sorry, what? Was it a generated landscape? Let me explain. It is click house. It is. ClickHouse in its whole beauty. It looks really nice. I don't have the screen anymore. I don't know if anyone. Yeah, I think you're, you're for sharing. me as well. Yeah, yeah Alexi, you lost your share. Well, let me continue. It was too beautiful. <laughs> it was too beautiful. <laughs> it was too beautiful to live. Ah, you know, it is probably a bug in Zoom because this picture has a extremely high resolution. It is. 16K. Uh, let me continue, try try again, but don't worry if it will be interrupted because it is it is just too beautiful. Do you see it? Too beautiful. Yeah, now I can see it. It's it's visible. Let's try again. Oh, he just lost it again. <laughs> way, way, way too beautiful. 
Yeah, it's a dangerous demo. We don't deserve to see it. We don't hear you, Alexei. Uh, Alexei, we lost your voice. No. Oh, no. Well, he said it was going to be dangerous things, to be fair. Linux user detected? It was behaving. Alexei, we still don't. Do you hear us? We still don't hear you. Your mic is off. Okay, now we hear you. There we go now. So, uh, do you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. But I think it's microphone. It's a different microphone. Yeah, it's a different, different mic. Microphone. Yeah, you know what has happened? No. I was trying to demonstrate this picture. This picture has extremely high resolution, 16K. There are uh, no 16K monitors exist, exist or up to my knowledge. And looks like Zoom does not keep up with this uh, high resolution. Uh, actually, it is just a hypothesis. But it, it was crazy. I hope you, you have seen just uh, part of this picture. And let me try to switch my microphone and you will tell me if it is all right. So is it all right? Is it same way? Before? Yeah. The same good microphone. It sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, it was <laughs> very. Yeah, it's good. No, now it's gone. One moment. Nope. Okay. Uh, do you hear me? Do you see me? I. <clears throat> we can hear you, but you're pretty faint. Faint. Uh, I'm not faint. Let me check. How about this? Nope. Still, still really faint. This? It almost sounds like the microphone's pointing away. No, it is not pointing away. Let me... <laughs> it looks like it's uh, not connected. Let me check. It should... It's worth waiting for. Yeah. With moon surface, yeah. <laughs> surface. Maybe, maybe it will be better. 
Maybe, but I'm not sure. We cross fingers. So, is it better? Nope. Hmm. It's the audio is lower, but it it's definitely audible. Uh, that's interesting. So should I continue? I would say continue. I can still hear you. Um, I, if everybody else, if you can just move your volume up, I was actually hear you quite well now. Okay, good. So we have analyzed click house with click house, and we get something strange. If you will repeat this at home, be please be prepared. Take a fire extinguisher just in case. And here is this picture. Uh, but you don't see all the details because you have to zoom in. I will not zoom in because it is dangerous. But let's take another example. So we see that ClickHouse can draw pictures. Yes, this one liner or multi line shell comment, and you will get this picture. But can it play music? Let me check because I am not sure. I will just write a query with some ran random garbage, basically random garbage. And the music, what it will be. I don't know. Let's uh, check if you will be able to listen. It, it will not be a good music. And most likely it is not music at all. Uh, let me check. And so do you hear it? At least something. Yes. Yeah, we heard it. Yep. What exactly do you hear? It sounded like a uh, like a toy organ. What toy organ? Okay. It sounds like a bunch of random sine waves. Random sine waves. Uh, okay, and probably some some noise. I don't recommend to listen to it, especially for a prolonged time. Because keep your your ear, ears safe. It, it is not actually music. And in fact, this is just uh, uh, the first try to make it play music. I have 100 more tries, but I will not demonstrate them to you. It will be just too pretentious. I just demonstrated the first try. Yes, it sounds like a, like a crap, but nevertheless, we just confirm it that yes, ClickHouse can play music. What else for ClickHouse local? Uh, you can make a build uh, that will take less than 50 megabytes. And you can put ClickHouse local into cloud Lambda function, publish it on a free instance and it will work and ready for usage. Let's try to open it. Wow, it opened. Clickhouse.glitch.me. Let's check. It works. What else uh, can we? What else can we check? Do we have some interesting queries for this uh, free instance? Uh, yes, we do. Let me try it again. I will use serverless ClickHouse located inside Cloud Lambda function and I will select from external data source.
Yes, it works. And it's fast. I would not say it, it is very fast. It works. And you know, this machine has one shared CPU and half a gigabyte of memory. So it is quite surprising that you can package quick health. You can squeeze it into this lambda function and it, it will continue to work. Uh, another interesting thing for ClickHouse server. You know, you can use ClickHouse server without any data. You can just install it on your server, run it, and forget about it. And it will collect all the metrics about your server. And you can get the history of these metrics. And as a bonus, you can open a dashboard embedded directly into ClickHouse. Let me check. So I have ClickHouse running on my machine. And here is the dashboard. So ClickHouse uh, has been started at 8 p.m. I can select some intervals. And I can see how, how many merges were running. Let me change the resolution to one second. Yeah, here are the merges. Here is CPU usage, CPU weight, uh, load average, memory usage. It is quite nice. The number of parts, almost everything. But what is the most interesting? You can actually edit every query. And it is parameterized query. It contains parameters, and parameters go directly here. So it is completely generic. Edit, play with it in any possible way. And it is not necessarily a monitoring dashboard. It is whatever dashboard you can imagine. So surprisingly, surprisingly, we have a small replacement of Grafana directly inside ClickHouse. It has uh, the main feature. It actually looks gorgeous. It is better than any other dashboard I have ever seen. It has history in the browser. Okay, uh, another interesting example. Can you just download the internet and put it inside ClickHouse? Yes, you can, and it is pretty easy. Just use a shell one-liner for this purpose. And it will do something like this. It will take a list of seven and a half million web uh, sites. It will make parallel download of these websites with uh, uh, curl and save the output HTML and the log about uh, how it was downloaded, how many redirects, uh, what was uh, HTTP protocol, every technical information. And after you will download just one terabyte of the internet, you will insert it into ClickHouse, into this table containing the HTML pages of all these websites. Let me, let me show you what you can do with it. Ah, here is how to insert into ClickHouse, pretty easy. And let's analyze it. Let me go to some random server. I have I have many servers. And I will try to run this query to see what will happen. So here are all the websites 
containing split house on the main page. There are a lot of them. Let's do something, uh, something more interesting. Do you recognize some familiar names here? I do. They look there like uh, they're ClickHash users. Yeah. Let me try another query. It is more interesting because it will parse HTML with ClickHouse. Yes, you can use ClickHouse to parse HTML. And you can also make the snippets and highlight the phrases inside these snippets. Let me run it. Nothing interesting. Clickhouse, clickhouse, clickhouse. I like it. Do you more clickhouse, the better. And what was this wonderful website? Ah, probably it is clickhouse website. And what it is? If only it was always that easy. I don't know. A lot of Chinese websites. So this is my search system. I can use it instead of Google. And it is parsing HTML with the speed of 20 gigabytes per second. What else? There are a lot of ways to use ClickHouse in unusual way. Some people installing ClickHouse on Raspberry Pi and it works. But there are even crazier people. They installing ClickHouse into Risk Five, and it also works. If you want larger machines, if you have Threadripper Pro, ClickHouse is the best way to check the memory throughput. If you have ARCH64 servers, ClickHouse is the best way to use these resources efficiently. If you have ClickHouse, you can even speed up your MongoDB and make it web scale. Hey, Alexi, is is that some sort of foreign data wrapper for uh, for Mongo that lets it use ClickHouse? How do, how does it, how do you yeah. do that? Exactly. Select from MongoDB. There is a table function for this. Like you can do select from MySQL. You also can do select from MongoDB. Just take out the data from MongoDB as soon Got as it. and put yep. it into ClickHouse. The yep. data is happy inside ClickHouse. The data is suffering inside MongoDB. <laughs> and uh, you can use ClickHouse as a serverless database for data lakes as a replacement for Athena or Presto or Trino. So please use ClickHouse. Please abuse ClickHouse and tell me how exactly do you use that and find something new, some new capabilities, new horizons. So that's it. And by the way, tomorrow there will be our release webinar for the Christmas ClickHouse release. I strongly advise you, I strongly recommend to join uh, my webinar. I will be presenting some interesting Christmas gifts. So thank you for listening. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Alexi. Yeah, and I already gave the heads up on the on the release webinar. Uh, so uh, any questions at this point? I think we can go till the bottom of the hour, and because uh, we've been going for.
two hours and 15 minutes so far. I think go to the bottom of the hour, but open it up. Any questions on ClickHouse in general about this talk, uh, about other things, uh, floor is open, so go for it. Yeah, uh, I Joseph, got a question. Oh, go, go ahead. Go, then. Go, go then. OK. Um, so in, in this is a problem that I've been working on uh, a lot the last few weeks, and you sort of mentioned it a few times as like a replacement for Athena, um, and I've been playing around with ClickHouse Local, uh, specifically running on AWS Lambda. Um, I'm wondering, uh, I, th I think in an ideal world, it, it works in such a way where uh, I have really short cold start times, but I could still query partitioned data, like it's aware of the partitions. I tried using uh, an S3 backed merge tree, uh, storing the local information with EFS, and then you know the data's in S3, but the cold start times were pretty long. When you say like as a replacement for Athena, um, you know what sort of uh, structure of ClickHouse in relation to the data are you referring to? Uh, there are some simple cases. When you just uh, process external files, uh, not like merge tree, but simply a bunch of Parker files, mm -hmm. a bunch of CSV JSON. This is the simplest use case. Slightly more advanced use case is processing of uh, Apache Hoodie or Apache Delta Lake formats. You can also use it with merge tree, but the problem is merge tree takes takes time to initialize. Yeah. Still, there are a few ideas how to make a lazy, partially lazy initialization, how, how to make it faster. Uh, we have implemented compressed indexes, compressed primary keys. So at least uh, the primary key will be faster to load in memory, but still it has to be loaded in memory. And it mm -hmm. will require a few more efforts to make a partial loading. So it will not load every partition. It will not load every data part on, the, on demand. And there are a lot of things we can improve. And I see you are experienced ClickHouse user. And maybe you can contribute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call myself experienced, but certainly curious. I mean, I've even tried using um, um, the, you know, uh, underscore file and underscore path in the S3 uh, table function. Uh, the issue is that it, it seems like it looks at all the files before it starts filtering rather than, um, you know, just look, comparing file names and then opening files. Uh, this should not happen. <laughs> this is definitely something that should work as you expected initially. If you see it is not like this, let's find out why. Okay, yeah, sounds good. I can open an issue or something because I, I was doing it in comparison with a DuckDB, I'm sure you're familiar with, that understands Hive partitioning of S3. Um, and uh, I noticed some stark differences when referencing the file name. So yeah, we can talk offline about that. Okay. Cool. Other questions? I've enabled everybody. Let's here. I'm going to check. Uh, uh, go ahead, Alexander. I think you had something. Yeah, yeah. Because parallel, um, I want to just go to to add, add, add to to my talk. Uh, yes, uh, let's say this is mean age to force merge on partition only param works, so it makes all partition at once. So I can confirm. We can use it. Sorry, I, we don't hear you. No, he, no. Or it's me. Much, yeah, I don't hear you, Alexi. <laughs> the Linux gods have. It's very strange because I also I, I'm under Ubuntu. I don't know what which uh, distributive uh, Alexei uses. I'm going to take the time to say thank you, Alexei, for including the demo in your talk. Yeah, I think we should probably have a uh, probably have a, a meetup sometime where we just do uh, serverless fun because there's there's a number of fun ways that you can use this. 
Good. Hey, while we're waiting for Alexi to get his voice back, any other questions? Alexi, we hear something. What exactly do you hear? Okay, now we hear you. Ah, we hear your voice. We hear your voice. You're back. Perfect. You know, it's not about Linux. It's about hardware. Uh, uh, ele electronics. There, there was a suggestion, possibly not helpful, that you go back to Windows. That's a weird way to pronounce Mac. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you, you I don't use I don't use Mac anymore. It's destroyed too many Java environments for me. So okay. So thank you for your questions. Great. Any other questions? Last question from me. Hey, Ramazan, go ahead. Hi. So uh, it's about projections. So when we use special codecs for uh, monotonically, monotonically increasing primary K columns, it, it, it brings great compression ratio, but when we do it, uh, use it in projections, since we are changing the columns, the compression codecs make it really hard to be compressed. So um, by default, I believe they are using default compressions. So is there any way to specify a compression codec for each projection? Hmm. As I expect, uh, it should be able to specify compression codecs for uh, columns inside projections in the similar way as for a table. Uh, if it does not work, please create a feature request. Okay, thanks. Cool. Any other questions? Right. Well, hey, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, yeah, the fun continues tomorrow with the December our ClickHouse Meetup, and uh, we'll be back in February. Uh, once again, if you have ideas for talks, I'll see you in a couple months. So thank you, everybody. And thanks again, Alexi and, and Alexander, for awesome talks. Uh, it's great having you guys on, and I uh, hope to talk to both of you very soon. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Robert.